All right, Alex, what is going on, man? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You know, it's nice that video lets us feel close together despite COVID. Despite the distance. Where are you joining from today, Alex? Uh, my wife's office. Exciting oh. place. Oh, you got the upgrade. How'd you get that? Yeah, because my son was throwing slime in my face. <laughs> Amazing. And hey, we got people joining from all over. Check this out. Noah saying he's joining from Vancouver. Good morning, 9.30 a.m. on the West Coast. I uh, would love to see where everyone else is joining from. Leave it in the comments. Me, I am not joining uh, from Vancouver, not joining from Toronto, joining from beautiful Mac Tier, Ontario. Super excited to be here. And in fact, tonight, we are going to be chatting a little bit about starting technology businesses and scaling technology businesses from small town Canada. Check this out, Alex. What do you think? The distributed's future. Starting your next startup Woo! in small town Canada. We well, will it's, see it's you there. definitely a topic about today, today as well, about distributed future. 125% cannot wait. All right. So, hey, we got a lot of stuff to cover today. I am super pumped. Should we kick it off? Yes, let's do it. All right. First topic on the board, five minutes on the clock, Wattpad sold to South Korean internet giant neighbor in a US $660 million deal. For those keeping track at home, it's over 800 million Canadian. Alex, what is going on here? Well, where to start? First of all, I feel like this is one of the worst kept secrets in the ecosystem over the last couple of months. Um, but it, but it's big news. Uh, where do you want to start? Do, do you think everyone knows who Wattpad is? Let's start there. If, if you're a longtime TechTO member, you definitely, you've seen Eva, you've seen Alan, you've heard the Wattpad story. Maybe we'll drop one of the TechTO videos uh, in the comments. Uh, but start, give us give us the 10 second. What's Wattpad? So well, a Wattpad is a place where if you want to write and you want to share it with the world, that's where you do it. Like yeah. it, it, you know, it, and it's, it's amazingly big. If this was a Valley-based company, it would have so much more buzz globally. They have 90 million monthly users globally. And most of those users are your core demographic for advertisers. They're, they're young women, and they access the app through a smartphone. So huge place for amateur authors, huge reach, a global company based out of Toronto. Okay. And so uh, they've been doing it for years. You know, We know, uh, long-time listeners know that they started it by, uh, holy cow, just getting public uh, domain books on your feature phone, which is yeah. unbelievable. Uh, grown a lot since then. Those numbers are crazy. Uh, who's buying them and, and why? So a company called N Naver, have you ever heard of them? I, I, I have heard of them, but for our listeners at home, why don't we tell them a little bit more about them? I'm a long time line user. I yeah. uh, love, love the stickers, but uh, tell us a little bit more about why they're buying a Toronto based oh. ad. So maybe I'll tell you who they are. First of all, they're like, according to, um, you know, Forbes are the ninth most innovative company in 2018, but more importantly, they're South Korea's largest online search engine. They own the Line mobile app. They have internet properties like uh, Webtoon and live streaming platform like VLive, which is used by mm -hmm. K-pop celebrities. So you think, why Nat, why are they buying Wattpad? I think it, it reflects that this is a global company with global ambitions, yeah. both Naver and Wattpad. And I think Wattpad um, is a rare North American company that has a huge active population outside of, basically in Asia, outside of Canada, right? Like from what I understand, they have lots of, uh, they have lots of book book deals in the Philippines. They have lots of active users across Asia. So I think I, I mean they've got they you, you pop onto Wattpad and look at popular stories. They've got tons of like South Korean boy band yeah. fan fiction on there, right? Yeah, your favorite. Yeah, yeah I, uh, one, one of my favorites, of course, uh, a user who has the uh, the story about uh, one of their favorite South Korean boy bands, BTS, becoming vampires and haunting. Uh, I think it's like 19th century Seoul. I mean, it's a if you haven't read it yet. Yeah, well, you know, I read I read it to my son as a bedtime story. That's uh, right. <laughs> my my daughter reads it to herself. Uh, but like, but I also think this reflects that you know, internet's global. Yeah. Um, lots of these biggest players are looking for new new IP to to um, take advantage of, and I think, yeah. you know, this makes sense. Like they weren't the only one to bid on Wattpad. Like rumors that that's this company called Spotify and and but, you know TikTok also bid on it. So tell me, uh, David uh, in the comments says, "Great for the Canadian tech scene." Agree or disagree? I think yes, you know, look, everything has potential benefits and disadvantages. I think the positive implications is you have an exit. An exit, I think, made both investors and early stage employees and founders money. Yes. And you know, you're talking about, you know, not unicorn sets, but pretty darn close. And this is a company that will recycle capital to yes. the ecosystem and had a founder that was 
actively involved across the ecosystem, already giving time, and extremely generous. So he's role modeled, and and you know Eva, who is who, you know early employee as well, they they basically role modeled how to be involved in this community. So that'll benefit the community. Could, couldn't happen. You say this usually. Um... Uh, and sometimes you don't mean it, but here we mean it. Couldn't happen to nicer, better people who are supporting the Canadian ecosystem, right? You know, you know. I think the one thing that you know, of course, the downside is I'd like to see more global companies be based out of Canada. So I think the potential downside is, you know, here's someone that could be the next Shopify that that's that's no longer independent. They're going to be operating independent, but they're owned by someone else. So yeah. it'll be interesting. I think that's neutral. It's not negative, but. Mm -hmm. Um, look, and at this point, we need wins, and we need wins yeah. with cash in a bank. And I think it's, uh, and also I think one last thing I'll say: the call they built it also with a culture that is not the Valley culture; it's a Canadian culture. It's, it's focused right. on inclusivity and focuses yeah. on just being more equitable, more just more inclusive. And I think that's a great way for Canada to lead the world. Yeah, and great for uh, great for East Coast Canada too, right? Wapad's got an office out there. I think they opened up in Halifax recently, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Shout out to Liz, of course, uh, newest TechTO member joining us from the lovely East Coast. Uh, all right, anything else you wanted to say on, on Wattpad? I want to say one more thing. You mentioned it, getting more capital into the ecosystem. I think this is huge. Uh, we've all read that Alex Danko post. Uh, unbelievable, polarizing, and we're going to have a conversation about it, right? Yeah, I think we will. Awesome. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be bringing up... Uh, some amazing people at our founders and funders this Friday. It's a double header, right? So it's not just this conversation. Yeah. What do we be talking about on Friday? We're, we're talking a about how to be a good angel investor and what that looks like. And then we're going to have our typical founder and funding. We're going to have Chris Newman and Kyle. Chris Newman is was originally at 500 startups in Van, in San Francisco. Who's moved back home to Vancouver? He's an investor in a company called CTO.ai out of Vancouver. So we're going to discuss that relationship, how it came to be, how they've raised money, and basically give the unvarnished truth what it's like to raise money and work with investors. I love that. I am sure someone listening right now will drop the link in the chat so you can definitely join that uh, on Friday. All right, should we move on to topic number yeah. two? Yeah, which you want to talk about bold commerce? Yeah, raising 27 million uh, in a 27 million, 35 million, probably Canadian that should yeah. be, in yeah. a Series B round of funding. Omers is in it. This is big news. Tell us more about what's going on here, Alex. So first of all, do you know what bold commerce is? Let's talk about it. What's bull commerce doing these days? So first of all, let's talk about a few things about bull commerce. They mm -hmm. were founded in 2013 in Winnipeg. Um, and we'll get back to why that's important after. I, yeah. They also were built, originally they were building apps for Shopify. Um, they've now grown big and they're not dependent on Shopify only. They build apps for Shopify's competitors and they build um, what I call headless e-commerce um, tools but via an API. Yeah. So you, you've seen a company that started about you know, seven, eight years ago yeah. has grown rapidly, started off building off one of our core companies in our ecosystem, you know, mm -hmm. Shopify, and is now growing independent and growing really fast. Yes. And uh, you mentioned in there, uh, starting from Winnipeg, a lot of things happening uh, out in the prairies these days, no? Yeah. Well, you know, prairies and, you know, go, I guess depends which, you know, across Canada, like we could have done this, we could have talked about some companies in Alberta that have raised money or, um, you, know, and, you know, just even lot was a lot, it feels like 10 years ago with uh, but like you had a big exit and also in uh was it where's uh verse uh what uh, was in pei i think two billion dollars oh, so st john's newfoundland, st. St. John's newfoundland. My mistake. Fair enough. and you know we are talking tonight about starting your next startup in small town canada or accessing talent it's going to be unbelievable it's gonna be super fun we're gonna be having a conversation this evening again linkedin so gods drop the Link in the chat. Yeah, but a uh, quick, you know, I just got a nice uh, text message from, uh, I guess, someone listening in Winnipeg saying, we've missed the vote on Tech Winnipeg. It's, you know, Shane, <laughs> my response to that, it's not, you know, right now there's no tech physically anywhere. So we are global and, you know, who knows, maybe we'll do Tech Winnipeg in the future. But like, hey, man, that's right. That's you know, right. A bit more about bold. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> this is also shows you have to be on top of trends. You have to be good and be on top of trends. They're API first companies and yeah. api companies are all the rage they're benefiting from e-commerce and they are in a, in a subset called headless e-commerce uh-huh so are you you know do you know are you familiar with what headless e-commerce is yeah it, it basically means they're providing all the infrastructure and web services that you can build the entire front end and user experience off of it right yeah and um that's exactly it it's, so it enables people to basically get off of shopify 
um, which is which is again this is why this is a very interesting deal to me um yeah. so i'll give you my thoughts i'd love to hear your thoughts but like so this is now a company that built off shopify so it yeah. shows how ecosystem builds on each other and now could compete against shopify because they're yeah. enabling people to do headless e-commerce and so that so that leads me to an interesting question what happens if their growth uh, if bold sees their growth from there and they have lots of apps that are very users on Shopify. Well, this, you know, this is the worst nightmare of the of a bit of the marketplace, right? Which is you enable your competition. Um, I, I would say that uh, knowing the culture that we want to build, uh, I think there's enough pie for everybody here. You know, this is a huge market. There's a lot of opportunity. Uh, I, I don't believe it's these things are going to be winner take all. There's going to be some people that want the guide the guide rails, and you know, Shopify offers headless too. Yeah. Um, but there's gonna be some people that want to go totally uh, independent and, and use these kinds of tools and competition in Canada is fierce competition globally is fierce. It makes us stronger. And, and I want to say there's one other thing that gets me excited about this deal. This is Omer's latest deal. Um, Omer, you know, some people may have forgotten Omer's led a C round of Shopify back in that mm -hmm. 2013. And at that point they were like, if you look at any late stage deal in Canada, they were involved Yeah. and you know, they continue to be a global based VC out of Toronto. Yeah, um, but they haven't led a late stage round in Canada since 2018. So I, I like to see them being active. I like to see them taking a leading uh, role in, in Canada, and that, to me, that's also important. And then finally, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I think it's important for people to understand that um, that's the those are the Ontario municipal workers, right? So yeah. uh, these are a lot of the people that are on the front lines uh, helping make Ontario safe, of course, which is amazing, and their venture arm. Uh, is one of the most important later stage sources of capital for Canadian companies, right? That's correct. And and they do early stage as well. Omar's is a multi-stage uh, VC firm. Um, yeah, and we've already mentioned our Winnipeg, just showing the strength across the country. Yes. Um, before we get to the next one, just want to remind people, I think we're, we're doing this live on LinkedIn. So if you put a comment or question, we can, or we'd love to just weave it into this, converse, this conversation. So put them there yeah. and then, Jason or I will. Uh, yeah. So far, my favorite, my favorite comment um, uh, comes from uh, Dave uh, from Portfolio Company uh, Planned. I'm just going to put it up every time. Great for the Canadian tech scene. What a conversation we're having today. I wish we could, uh, all of our quick takes could be this great. I feel like this comment can definitely be left uh, for every one of our conversations today. All right, we ready to move so just, on? Just one last thing. Yeah. Stephanie pointed out, and this is true. Omers was an investor in Wattpad too. So Wat Omers is a, <laughs> you know, Good, good day to be from Omers. <laughs> good day to be an Ontario municipal worker. Yeah. Right? Uh, That's right. Yeah. So you want to talk about the next financing? <laughs> I think we should do it. This is a big one too. Yeah. Uh, Rewind, uh, who's based in Ottawa, raised a 19 million Series A. Yes. So let's talk about this. We are really in the e-commerce ecosystem today, aren't we? Well, you know, I think they're more of a SaaS play. So Rewind's, you know, six-year-old company mm -hmm. based, based in Ottawa. So again, mm -hmm. you know, Ottawa always seems to be a hub that no one talks about. Yeah. Um, and what they do is they help basically businesses back up and restore their software. Um, uh, and they, what they do is they go to other SaaS or softwares and after that. So like they, again, once again, they start off Shopify. So they built a Shopify integration. So if you are a Shopify merchant and you wanted to back up your store state to like three hours ago, five hours ago, a month ago, they yeah. enable that. And they've done that with, I think about if my, I think it's about 10 different so uh, SaaS software and they're growing. So something like if your QuickBooks are zero and you want to go back. So very unique product. Um, and so it looks like a lot of smart money pouring in. Certainly really smart early stage investors who had an early look at this company would have gone all in. Right, Alex? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so tell you us know, your story. What happened? Well, you know, look, um, someone introduced me to Mike. I don't, we never really had a chance of a discussion, but it was one, you know, I think I will post a Twitter thread later on where you saw a very capital efficient company out of Ottawa mm -hmm. um, growing relatively quickly, but people had a question, is this a real market? How big can this be? Um, you know, and most people didn't even, I think never really dug in. I, I caught at the tail end of the round. I really didn't have a chance. I don't know. I maybe caught my, you know, kind of five, 10 minute conversation with Mike, but I think yeah. I wasn't the only one. Lots of people said, Hey, why isn't Shopify to do this? Why isn't QuickBooks do this? How big is this market? Well, you know, according to stuff I've read, they have 80,000 businesses worldwide um, using them today. So it, they're growing fast. They continue to grow. And it seems to be an enormous market that many people passed on. Interesting. And so if you could go back, would you would you do it differently this time? Yeah, I, I probably would have actually sp spent more time talking to them. And, and the interesting, um, 
even early investors, this was a pure founder bet. Like, so I think yeah. uh, you, you have uh, uh, scale up ventures in there. And mm -hmm. if you go look at the thread um, from um, uh, Roberts, uh, yeah. Uh, and and actually from Mike, uh, both of them, Mike talks, there's a thread out there talking about his journey as a founder and how it basically shows how tenacious he had to be and how bit crazy he had to be. And yeah. it also talks about the seed round, the only investor knew him already for six, seven years. Right. And going back to the Danko article, this goes a bit to why, you know, sometimes Canada is a bit conservative, but you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to raise money. And I don't and think we're, it's And we're going to be talking about that Danko article, right? Yeah. yeah. So t tell us about that. Oh, I wasn't going to plan on talking about today, but, you know, so Alex Danko, one of the better writers out there, one of the bit more followed tech bloggers out um, in the ecosystem, working for Shopify right now. He published a blog post earlier, I guess, earlier last week saying, hey, why the Canadian tech ecosystem doesn't produce more winners and what has to be changed? And one of the things he mentioned there was the difficulties in raising money from angel investors, which yeah. I think was directionally wrong but there was other points in that article that are well, right well, hold on don't give away everything because we're gonna be talking about yeah. it on friday right yeah but we'll, we'll probably just talk about what to do and what what the re reality is okay awesome so i like to say uh for this one for the rewind raise do you think it was great for the canadian tech scene <laughs> yes I, I i actually i actually think the other thing that we haven't talked about is again led um you know you know there was quite a few investors led by Novia, yeah. but you have Bessemer involved and it's, you know, and here's what, what we're also, it's not being talked about. Bessemer usually invests a bit later stage, but I've been seeing them pop up earlier and earlier across the East coast in deals. I think I've seen them in five or six uh, deals that not all have been publicly announced. And, uh, and why, why is that? And why is that important that Bessemer is active in, in deals up here? Well, I think it's not, if it was one or two deals, I wouldn't say it's important. I think it shows just another, Mm -hmm. find another investor that's actually showing dedication by doing, building a portfolio up here. Cause it's very yeah. easy for someone to come and say they're excited about Canada, do one investment in Vancouver, Montreal, yeah. um, and then not get this engaged with the community. And if that, that investment doesn't work out well, they say, well, we can't bother. We can't, we already looked at it. But if someone's building a portfolio of investments, it's more yeah. likely they'll have success and it provides additional capital for our and, company. To and I think it, I think it says something different, right? It also yeah. says that um, there are ingredients in this ecosystem that they are betting on, right? And it's and it's not about the individual company story. Of course, it's going to be super compelling, uh, but it is also about the talent that we have here, the culture that we have here, the way that we build businesses here, the support system. Uh, the you know a lot of B two B businesses here, Alex, so that yeah. the people are buying here too, or that we can sell globally, which I love as well. So I'm going to call out one question. Evan uh, asked, "How many uh, new angels are there?" Oh yeah, with the Wattpad exit, and I don't know. My guess is, you know, probably thirty to fifty could protect potential angels. It depends on. Well, their Alex, situation. We're, we're live, so do the math live for us here. How do you how do you oh. think about how many millionaires were minted at Wattpad today? And and tell us a little bit about um, on a transaction like this. When does that stuff become liquid? When does that get back into the ecosystem? Well, not, now you, this is like a McKinsey case study because there's so many assumptions which aren't true here. Look, yeah. again, I don't know if this was, I can't remember if this was cash or equity, but assuming it's cash, it should be pretty liquid in the next 90 days when the deal closes. Yeah. And then it just depends on what their option pool look like and who has options invested and what, you know, what, you know, my guess from the outside in is that it was a good return for most investors because the amount raised was a hundred and, 30 million. So yeah. let's again, I don't remember what the last round was, but let's say the last round was at 80. Uh -huh. So that imply, you know, a valuation of around three to 400. So, yeah. so you're up from there. So everyone should be in the money. So it's just, you know, again, how many employees are, how many employees are Wattpad right now? Did you see a number? I mean, like, I think it's like, a, I'm going to say 150, but let's check it. There's this new platform called LinkedIn. Never heard they, of it. They, they seem to have all of like the employee information for the companies. I'm going to go check it out. Um, I, I think that sounds about right. And, you know, uh, I love it. Evan looking for new sources of capital, right? He's hitting, he's in LinkedIn right now, going to Wattpad and figuring out exactly who he's going to hit up to get some of that Wattpad cash. So um, Wattpad is a bit of an anomaly because on LinkedIn, it says it has 2,671 yeah. employees. <laughs> every, every <Yeah>. author. <laughs> so, so obviously it's that not 10% of that. Yeah, so, um, yeah. and, a, and a good reminder for people who are joining us, we talked about, um, Wattpad at the top of, of our show. But for those who are joining us, uh, really important to remember, 
it's not just about the Wattpad uh, story here. Uh, Eva, uh, an early employee at Wattpad, has been giving back to the community with her knowledge in network effects and with capital uh, for years now with uh, Two Small Fish Ventures. And Alex, you, you've done some work together, haven't you? Yeah, we have. What's it like working with Two Small Fish Ventures? It's great. And we're going to be, you know, she's going to be talking about it on uh, Friday as well. Um, on Friday? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, we're doing, <laughs> we're doing matters and funding and she's going to be talking about angel investing. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. So I, I wish I could say we had insight on that deal coming together before this, but, uh, you know, <laughs> didn't know the time it would be so fortunate. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, like, hey, that's when you get great, great people coming to share back with the community, great things happen to them. And so this happens more often, I think, uh, than you would expect, which is yeah. amazing. Uh, fantastic. All right. We've got one last topic to cover for today's quick takes. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Navdeep Baines, Minister of Innovation, is stepping down. What does that mean, Alex? High level, if you want my cynical view, not much. No, wait. Uh, let's start with the high level. Like build, build the story up, and then we'll get the takeaway at the end. Look, you know? So N Navdeep Baines has been more friendly to the tech ecosystem than any other minister of innovation before, at least I remember. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe there may be someone 15, 20 years ago, but wasn't involved back in Canada at that point. Yeah. Um, you were mid career. You were mid career back then, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I was. I was retiring, probably. according to you. Um, you know, like I think the two big impacts, positive ones from the ecosystem perspective, is mm -hmm. one is one clear winner. Us actually say, I'll go with McKinsey style. There's three. One is his immigration policies. Like, yeah. I think one thing that's put fuel in the fire across Canada is the ability to be, you know talent friendly and allow talent to come work here or start companies up yeah. here quickly. Like that's been a huge benefit. And that was spearheaded by Navdeep Bain's um, uh, department. Yeah. The other thing, uh, which I think is successful, hasn't passed yet, is he's doing a digital charter, which provides clear rules around data storage and collection, which just having clear rules about something just makes it easier for business to make decisions. Right. Then finally, the one which I say is a bit controversial in my opinion is the public private partnerships like they put a billion dollars in the super clusters initiatives wow um i think that looks good my opinion is that it okay let's get let's get cynical now let's like, get cynical now like I, I think it's a waste of money um it just looks good from an outside perspective i think where his job wasn't done or where he's being a bit negative um we haven't seen our an increase in um, research and development in this country. It's been flat, yeah. and so we're it's a declining share of GDP. And other OECD countries are spending more on R and D. And R and D doesn't mean you're innovative, but it's an indication. So the trend is negative here compared to well, our competition. You hope, if you were really cynical, you'd say you're playing the you're playing the the game to qualify as R and D to get back some credits. But okay, yeah. let's let's say that R and D yeah. is an indication of innovation. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and 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 then finally, like. There's been a lot, and I don't think this is under his purview, but the liberal government, and, and just, you know, one thing is over the last four or five years, there's been lots of, I call anti entrepreneurial tax policies. Lots of them get yeah. shot down, but like they want to tax options, they re want to reduce costs. And I think, and I actually think with the current COVID crisis, when we get out, you know, it's going to be an easy, an easy place. So like while we're trying to spear, like, you know, while, you know, Navdeep was trying to get more tech, more innovation in this ecosystem, mm -hmm. the policy was also punishing those people. That were, were leading it and making and having economic benefits. So I look at it as I hear that. I, overall, it was a it was a great partner for the ecosystem because yeah. it puts put a spotlight on us. You know, at the high level, they were doing the right things and trying to do the right things and did some changes. Yeah, I think at the sub level, there was there was a bit of um, it was a bit inconsistent. And but I you know I think that's I'll, politics I'll in general. Give, so, I'll, so I'll give you my hope. Uh, you know, as you get someone new into the role. Uh, my wish is that we find somebody who's going to support the grassroots communities and ecosystems. And so a lot of top down support uh, coming from our government, a billion dollars in super clusters, uh, tons of money going into some of the regional innovation centers, which are which are awesome. But at the end of the day, it's people in this community that need to uh, get talent, get information, get connected to people, uh, you know, find co-founders, make deals, sell you know, here's one person in the community right now, Serene Haddad, computer vision and data science, experienced person looking for a job. No super cluster is going to help Serene, but we can, all right? Like yeah. you, you can. So hit the comments if you are looking for uh, experienced data science and computer vision engineers, there's one right there, right? That's what we need. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, again, I'm not usually political. Like my view is historically, yeah. TechTO is there to help our governments across the country we don't 
proactively go in. You know, what do you think of Jason Duncan's take here, Alex? R&D has historically failed because companies get excited about other things and shift focus. Yeah, no. I don't know. <laughs> like, look, if like, look, Reminds R&D. Me of this comment. Yeah. You know Alex is a VC because he always gets to the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Like, again, I, I think R&D done right and it's mm -hmm. different. Like, if you look at the historical R champions of R&D, they do R&D just to almost open optionality for the company to figure out where to invest in. And, and sometimes mm -hmm. they don't capitalize on like, you know, Xerox Park or even even like IBM, they've traditionally done lots of R&D. And yeah. there's two things. One is to create create innovation, others to commercialize. And I think historically Canada has been bad at commercializing. You can also say that with our university transfer programs. I think they're much better than they were a decade ago. And so I, I think R&D doesn't have to have an explicit ROI in any one project. It's, 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 it's an innovation. It's, it's a portfolio, just like a VC, you know, just like a VC investing in portfolio companies. Yes. Unbelievable. Okay. So look, uh, three minutes to go on the clock left in our show today. Uh, now's the time to ask some questions. We've got one coming in from Evan Hallward, uh, long time tech TO community member. Let's bring it up here. Uh, what about EI for entrepreneurs, government funding to enable Canadians to start companies? Ooh, I love this one. What do you think of this, Alex? Yeah, I wish. Um, but like, I'll even say, I, I think it's needed. I don't think I have a small belief it'll happen. Just like even look at what's the CERB or CWS. If yeah. you were, if your founder is leaning back into your company because you've taken a step back, you don't qualify for grants because the government's too worried about yeah. entrepreneurs cheating the system. And you know what, the, the way I would, I would approach this, I think you're, I, I think, um, forget ch cheating the system, Alex, this is UBI, give everyone a universal basic income and let them do with it what they want, right? You don't need to qualify, you don't need to play the game, this is R&D, this is an entrepreneur, I do this, just like, here's some cash, go and do it, I think we've done a good job, I think the government responds to keep people on payroll by basically providing that safety net through employers, yeah. it's smart, it's smart, it can't last forever, you know? <laughs> and so I think the real, there's gonna be a real day of reckoning, uh, Evan, when, uh, when, when that changes. Um, I think there's a lot of businesses being propped up there. At the end of the day, it's gonna have to change, and, and I'm not sure that um, an even more generous social support than what we have today is gonna to be the answer. So we wanna take one last question from Andres? Yeah, let's do it. So I'll start here, I think, it's wait, wait a second. Today's a good day for Canadian tech. Hey, hey look, I'm not going to say it was a bad thing. I, I think, look, first of all, Element AI is an example of a value-based financing, right? So when people say we're conservative, Element mm -hmm. AI was, was Canada's, one of Canada's examples of going for it. And when you go for it, it doesn't always work out. Like, yeah. like I think my comment is when the deal happened, it, it, felt, it felt like old Yeller getting taken getting, taken out and getting shot, right? Like Element AI... Um, had lots of great technology and never got product market fit or beyond consulting. So yeah. it was a matter of time. The good thing is, yes, IP was sold to an American company, but there's talent here. Those people, the people that weren't working got released into the yeah. ecosystem. They had experience of what works and what doesn't work. So net positive, we need more talent here. We need more experience. And, you know, people see just, you know, you learn as much from a loss or a failure as you do from a success sometimes. Yeah, sometimes more, right? Yeah. All right. Let's wrap it up with one minute to go, Alex. What do people have to look forward to in the TechTO ecosystem? The TechTO ecosystem? Yeah. Something well, tonight? Something tonight. Um, yeah. Okay. What and about something on Friday? Something on Friday as well. All right. Hey. And I'll actually, before I let you close up, I'd say, you know, this is an experiment. Yeah. If you if you like this and you want us to like just jump on LinkedIn and do quick takes of stuff as news breaks, leave us the comments, give us feedback yeah. using the hashtag TechTO. And then, you know, if this works, Jason, and I will actually get good at this. <laughs> uh, so that's it from uh, Alex and I today. It was awesome hanging out with you. Uh, we're going to stick around for a couple more minutes in the comments. So definitely uh, let us know what you thought there. Uh, excited to get your feedback and we'll see you tonight. Yeah. We're in the business of delivering impossible things. We're in the business of delivering things that nobody's ever seen before. If you build that culture, you'll come up with you know really cool and innovative stuff and you know, literally could be in the next multi-billion dollar idea. So this conversation is largely going to be about scaling yourself and scaling your leadership team. I wanna talk about one of the biggest struggles that I think a lot of startups face early on, which is building initial traction.